In this video, we'll take a look at four easy motion graphic promo techniques you can use in your next project. What's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name's Shaw Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn that bell notification on so you know when I release new videos. This video is packed with tips and techniques to help you speed up your process. So let's dive straight in. Since out of After Effects, I have a composition that is 1920 by 1080p, 30 frames per second and 5 seconds long. Also have 3 footage files and my logo. You can grab these from the description below. There's a link to my website and you can download them and follow along. I'm going to take that first footage file and just drop it onto the timeline. And then I'm going to pre-compose this. So either Control Shift C or go to Layer, Pre-Compose at the bottom. And then let's just call this Footage 1. Move all attributes into the new composition and double click to go inside here. Now I want to create the sliding technique where there are about five bars, two coming down and three going up. So the way we need to do this is by creating masks along here. So I'm going to double click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to just turn on this if you don't see your masks. This little switch over here will enable that. And then I want to accurately divide this into five. So if I press the M key, we'll be able to see the shape and uh, we can just click on that. And then on the right here, we can see this is 1920. So I can come over here, press right and divide by five. Pressing the tab key and now now we can see that this is 384 pixels wide and we can move this over by going plus 384 and then over here just go 384 and press OK and you'll see that this moves over one bar. I can duplicate this mask and then press M again, click on the shape and then go to this one first plus 384 plus 384, press the tab key and then plus 384 plus 384, press the tab key and OK. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to delete these two masks from the bottom one. Next thing I want to do is actually position these so I'm going to select both of these press the position I'm going to move this down let's go to about 916 and then with the bottom one selected I'm going to move this up 110 I'm going to select all the keyframes press F9 press the graph editor button and make sure that you are in the edit speed graph so that little button over there and then I'm going to select both these keyframes and what I want to do is actually just pull this a bit when you release you'll be able to see the graph a bit more clearer that should be good let's just take a look at this movement Last thing we need to do, we need to fix where the images are not showing. So I'm going to come over to effects and presets, type in CC repeat tile or reptile and just double click this to add it. Now we've got the top one selected, so we need to expand this down. So I'm just going to drag this across. I'm going to change the tiling to unfold so that it mirrors and I'm going to select the footage on the top, double click on the CC reptile again and then go to the expand up and just drag this forward and do the same tiling unfold. With that done, we can head back to our main composition and and then I'm going to hit the S key to scale and moving over to about 20 frames. I want this to come in quick, pretty quickly. I'm going to turn the keyframes on, move back to zero and I'm going to take this up. Let's say about 250%. Select both keyframes, press the F9 key. Now I want this to come in flying very quickly. So I'm going to go to the graph editor, select both these keyframes, pull this one until it snaps and then pull this one back until it snaps to the same side. And this means it's going to fly in really quickly and then slow down into a nice ease. Turn that off and go back and let's just preview that. Now that we have our sliding transition, I want to start from a solid white. And I'm going to use a few extra effects to make this totally pop. So the first thing I want to do is create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to add a glow effect to this. So just type in glow, double click glow, and this is going to create the white out effect. So moving back to frame zero, we're going to drag down the threshold to zero and drag up on the radius until we get a pure white. I'm going to rename this layer to glow, press the T key for opacity, turn it on at zero, move over to about 10 frames and take this down to zero. Select both keyframes and press the F9 key. That should be good for our purposes. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some vibrance to this. So create a new adjustment adjustment layer, rename this to vibrance, type in vibrance over here, just take the vibrance up to 100, I'm going to press T key for opacity, turn this on, move over to about one second, we'll see this color has gone really blue, you can drag the opacity down to zero, and then select both keyframes, press the F9 key. The last thing I want to do is just add some optics compensation to this. So just create a new adjustment layer, rename this to distortion. I'm going to come over to the effects and presets, type in 
optics compensation. Double click this to add it and let's take the field of view all the way to about 100 and then re reverse the lens distortion. Now this one we can't actually animate the opacity of the layer, we need to actually animate the field of view. So I'm going to move over to let's say about 20 frames, this is when it lands. And I'm going to keyframe that, press the U key, move this keyframe back to zero and then take this field of view down to zero. And to select both these keyframes, press the F9 key and then we should have a good entry. Moving on, let's create our motion title. And I'm going to show you two ways to bring text in. And I'll combine these two to create one title animation. To create our motion title, I'm going to right click, go to new text layer, and I'm going to type in design. And if you're on centralized text, just change it to the left. I want this text to fly in from the right. So I'm going to go to my character. I have Futura bold and my text size is 255. I think that should be good. But what I also want to do is change the position of this anchor point right to the center of this word. And an easy way to do this is to control double click on the anchor point tool. You'll see it jumps there. Then we can go to align and align this to the center of our scene. Next thing I want to do is actually drop this down and go to text. And I want to animate this. I want to add a track to this and in about one second I want this text to be in the scene so I'm going to keyframe the tracking amount and then I'm going to move back to about 15 frames and I'm going to drag this up Let's say about 115. I'm going to add to this animator. So you don't want to go to the animate pop down. You want to go to this little button over here, animate, and I'm going to go to property and I'm going to go to position. I'm going to turn that on at one second. I want that to be our in position. Move back to 15. Let's just move this over quite a bit. Let's say 300. Go back to add and we're going to go to property and we're going to add an opacity. So this one, we're not actually going to keyframe and animate. We're just going to take it down to zero. I'm going to take this all the way down and then we're going to actually work with the range select in order to turn these letters on. So I'm going to drop this down. So I'm going to keyframe the start of the range selector on frame 15. Then I'm going to move forward to one second and I'm going to drag this up to a hundred and you can see how this changes everything and I'm going to press the U key so we can actually just see our keyframes select all of them press the F9 key and I want this to ease in at the end so I'm going to open the graph editor select all the keyframes and then just pull this last all the way until it snaps turn the graph editor off and let's just take a preview of this Let's actually create some gradient for this. So I'm going to right click, create a new solid. Let's call this gradient and make comp size just to make sure, press okay. And then I want to come over to effects and presets, type in gradient, and I want to choose this four color gradient. I've got a few colors here if you want to follow along. FFB124. 1E00FF. The next one, FF1849 and 7200FF. I'm just going to move these so they are not in the same kind of place. The text is around. Let's just drop this below and then we can actually position these a bit better. Drag this over here, maybe this over here. Then I want to make these swirl into each other a bit more. So I'm going to come over to effects and presets, type in twirl, double click this to add. I'm going to click the twirl center and I'm going to drag it over here and then I'm going to drag this up it's about 61 should be good and then I'm going to add another twirl move this to the opposite side and then just drag up let's say about 20 and I want to offset these colors as it's animating inside the text so I'm going to come over to the effects panel I'm going to go down to color correction and then color offset so over here CC color offset click that and then I'm going to move to just after it lands it's two frames after one second let's keyframe the green phase and let's move forward let's say about here press the U key and we can just drag this backwards just to see let's say about minus 80 that looks pretty good to me I'm going to press U to close that up and then go over to track mat and select alpha mat design we can see how this looks I'm also just going to move some of these colors around so far happy with that I just want to create some more text on the inside here so I'm going to right click new text Let's start typing digital conference, select or go to the paragraph and let's select this center aligned and then just go to character. And if you don't see these, you can select the default and it should pop up or come to window and just find your, your character tools or paragraph tools. I'm going to take this text down to about, say about 42 should be good. And then I want to just drag this up, let's choose something around like 300. That should be good. I also want to control double click on the anchor point to center this and then 
then I'm going to align this to the center of the screen. The next thing is to create a rectangle around this. So I'm going to come over to our rectangle tool and just double click to actually create a rectangle. Now make sure that you're selecting nothing because it will create a mask on a layer if you do have something selected. Let's change this to no stroke and then the fill. Let's just change this FF0036 and press OK and press the U button twice so that we can actually see the size of this rectangle part. Unlink the actual size of this and then take down and then just type in about 650 and 50. Let's drop this below the digital conference. That's actually exact so I'm quite happy with that. And what I want to do is actually scale wipe this bar on from the left and what you need to do is actually have your anchor points of this rectangle on the left here and it is not the anchor point of the layers. If I just drop that down again we should start seeing a few more options and this is under the transform rectangle one. So if I had to zoom in here you'll see that we have this anchor point but if I select this one right here and I take my anchor point tool and I click and drag this we can move that but if we select our layer again we will see that our main anchor point is still there in the center. Now if we take off the constraint proportions and we actually drag left and right you'll see that it animates from the one side to the other. So I'm going to move over to about one second and 15 frames and just turn the keyframe on for the scale press the u key let's move to 25 26 and take this down to zero i'm going to select both these keyframes press the f9 key and i'm going to follow the same curve that we did for the big text let's select both of these and then just drag and snap Turn off the graph editor and that should be pretty good i'm going to duplicate this press the u key twice and i'm going to change this to white I'm going to drop this down below and I'm just going to move this over. Press the V key if you need to get to your pointer tool quickly. Just move this over one frame. So before I do that, let's just take these two layers and just pull and snap it here so we know where it begins. And then I'm just going to drag this back one keyframe. So now we'll get this nice kind of drawing on effect. Next thing we need to do is actually create a mask for the text. I'm going to select the top shape layer, go over to edit, copy with property links. This way we know that if we ever make a change to this, this new copy will follow the exact changes that we are making. So I'm going to press control V to paste and then drop this above our text. So this mask is going to come in from the left to reveal our text. I want the text to be sliding in from the right. So let's just select that text. Let's move over to 115, press the P key for position turn it on and let's move back frame 26 let's just move this over and about here select both keyframes press the f9 key select both and snap this curve to the left and then press graph editor again i'm going to come over to track mat select that and say alpha mat now if we play this now this last technique you can use or not use it's just something i wanted to cover in this if you want to copy this you want to take the branding further of these actual rectangles scaling on and push it over your entire promo video we can just can just duplicate one of these layers call this bg rectangle press ok drop this down press the u button twice take the scale right up so let's take this to 1920 and then actually just scale this to about this size here and twirl this up and just change this to an adjustment layer. Let's recolor this layer so that we can see it better. And then I'm going to come over to effects and preset, type in CC toner, double click to add it, and we're going to change this mid-tone. So I'm going to change this to 37A8FF and press OK. Drop this below the actual design word as well. And then I want to add some Gaussian blur to this, or Gaussian blur. Double click this to add it. Repeat edge pixels and let's take that up, say about 30. And let's also blend this color with the original at about 50%. And the last thing we need to do is actually change that anchor point to the left so it draws on the same way. U button twice, come down to the anchor point, select it. Just use our anchor point tool and drag this shift to lock the movement and just put it to the end. Now we just play this. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, please click the like button. It does help the channel quite a bit. Now in this part we're going to create our spiral wipe animation and this is the quickest way I've found to create this effect. Let's create a new composition. I'm going to call this spiral wipe 1920 by 1080p 30 frames per second 5 seconds long as well and press ok. And I need to create a circle in our scene so I'm going to hold down on the rectangle tool and I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. I'm going to double click this and let's just change a few things. I don't want any fill in this and I want this to be a perfect circle. So if we press the U key twice, we'll see the size of this. And I'm going to hold Alt and double click on the constraint proportions button and this will create a perfect circle. Next thing I want to do is 
actually change the size of this to 300. And then I want to change the stroke to 300 as well. I also want to add a gradient stroke to this. So click on the word stroke over to linear gradient and click OK. Let's adjust some colors here. Select the first and we're going to change this to FF41 DF and the other one to 9537 FF and press OK. And I'm just going to reposition these to go from the top left to the bottom right. So I'm going to move over to 20 frames, come to the add and add a trim paths to this. I'm going to drop this down and keyframe the start, move to zero, take this up to 100. And now this will draw on. The other thing I want to actually animate is the, the stroke size, press U twice, and then I'm going to click on the stroke width at 20 frames, move back to zero and take this down to zero. Press the U key until you see just the keyframe. So wants to turn off, wants to turn on, select all the keyframes, press the F9 key, come to the graph editor, select all the keyframes, and we're going to snap this one on the right into the middle. Turn that off and just press the play. The other thing I want to do is actually change this to be rounded. So I'm going to press U three times. And then if you look at your, then if you look at your gradient stroke over here, we can twirl this up and twirl this back down and you'll see that we have the line cap over here. Let's just change this to rounded cap and we'll get a much better drawing on of this. I'm going to twirl this up and let's duplicate this layer, press the U key. Let's move this about five frames forward. Then I'm going to take this up, pressing the U key twice. Let's change the scale of this. We need to make this 900 to be bigger than the 300 inside and bigger than the 300 of the stroke width. So if you're battling with the maths of this, move over until it's drawn and just drag until you see it actually pop and you can just match it. I'm going to change this to be 900 just so it's accurate. Okay, we will start seeing a slight drawing error. So I'm going to change the stroke width to 301 just so that we have one extra pixel. And I'm going to select the layer below and do the same. And this will just cover any holes that we have. The other thing I want to do, just press U twice. I'm going to reverse this under the ellipse path so that we now have this going on. Close that down and we're going to duplicate twice more. So I'm going to press D. Let's move to about frame nine and I'm going to press U twice. Change this to one five hundred. Let's just move forward to see. Reverse this to the other way. Pop this down. Duplicate. Let's drag this forward until about 11 frames. Press U twice. Reverse this and we need to take this up to 2100 to fill those gaps. And let's just fit this up to 100% and give this a play. That looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do is just adjust some of these colors. So this is the biggest one. I'm going to drag this the top left and the bottom right. Just want to create some kind of artistic look to this. And if you can't see your handles, you can literally just click the stroke, press OK, and your handles will appear again. Just drag this up to about there, and this down to there. And then the same thing with this one right here. The last thing to do to just add some more creativity is just to maybe take this one, this color just a bit more pink, and you'll start seeing this kind of drop shadow look. I'm going to copy this pink color, press OK, let's zoom into this. Select Select the top layer and just paste this over here. You can close this down and then just drop it into our scene at the top. And I'm going to turn it off for now. I'm going to move this over and I want our next footage to actually come in at the two second mark. Let's come over to our footage. Let's choose the footage to be. Let's drop this in. And if you hold shift down, it'll snap to where your timer is. Pretty happy with that. Let's drop the spiral wipe on top of that, move so it's in the same position, and I'm going to say alpha mat, and this should draw on quite nicely. So I want to show this for just a little while, and then we're going to bring in the vector of this spiral wipe. So turn this on, let's say about three seconds, this will start drawing on, and I also want to reveal my logo. So I'm going to go into my logo and just select the actual emblem, copy this, close that, paste it to our scene, and just a line inside here. I think that should be good. And I'm just going to pull this over. Let's say just about 310, 311, and then duplicate our spiral wipe, pull that over. And let's just actually scale this so we get a different kind of feel once this logo is masking in. So we're going to select the logo, go to alpha mat. The final thing I want to do is just turn the motion blur on for everything. So I'm going to control A, turn the motion blur on, and let's give this one last final preview. I need to turn this on to full so that we can get the full effect. Drag this down and just hit the space, space bar. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials like this, take a look at one of the two videos appearing above me right now. Keep animating. And until next time.